All right, in this video, we're going to be tying a musky fly. This will be a little bit smaller than some of the other musky flies you may be familiar with. And we're looking for something, you know, some in the six to eight inch range. Um, designed primarily to be thrown on a lighter weight rod, like an eight weight um, or, or a nine weight. Uh, and that, that can alleviate some of the stress of, of slinging those bigger musky flies all day long. Uh, so we're doing a partridge hook. This is a, uh, a six aught and um, I still crushed the barbs on it. We're going to be using a, uh, a thicker thread. This is a black UTC 210 and I'm just going to start about halfway down the hook. I'll add a thread layer as I go along. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started laying this back. back our normal amount come forward just a bit <clears throat> we're gonna be doing kind of like a rainbow colored flash it's got a good green hue to it some coppers mixed in we're gonna be doubling this over so keep that in mind when you cut it you really need to cut about half the diameter you're looking for when you when you finish. All right. And standard technique when doubling, put it around the thread, pull it back, put it up and secure it. And I'm only going to put on a few wraps up front. And then like if we were doing a deceiver or something like that, we're going to try to get the material to wrap around the back end of the hook. So as we come around, we get more of a 360 degree presentation rather than just a big clump up on top. We're going to end up trimming this, so I'm just going to pin it back here. All right, I've already prepared my feather. And we're doing a uh, chartreuse grizzly hackle. Uh, cut the standard kind of comb front end, and I actually crush. There's a pair of barb crushers, same I use actually for this hook, just to crush the stem to flatten it out. So I can take, place this along the hook shank. Just gonna put on a couple wraps around it. Trying to minimize thread bump here. Again, another uh, pair of feathers I've already got prepared. Lay it down. <clears throat> sitting a little better. Get a little bit more pressure. All right. Let's trim this flash while I'm here. A little bit longer in the tail. I like to cut at my diagonal. All right. Put all that in that material clamp or spring or whatever you want to call it. Let's manipulate this material a little bit. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do. Just weld all this in place with some super glue. Put some super glue along this thread. Wrap this over top. I'm gonna stop right there. 
Just kind of smooth that over. That should ensure that material stays put and doesn't go anywhere. Some uh, 0.02 lead free wire. Let's get um, this fly a little bit heavier. I don't always use sinking line on my musky. Sometimes I may want to fish a shallower area or more of a surface. So I want my fly to be a little bit heavier so I can get it under. <clears throat> this helps to do that. Uh, the front of this fly is going to be a little heavy too, so it'll nosedive a little bit. Just because we're going to put some uh, head cement and everything up there. But I'm going to add most of this weight here in the middle of this fly. That's going to make sure that this thing is more of an overall neutral buoyancy. Alright, that's good. It's a pretty heavy hook too, so... Hook help weight it down. In addition to the head of the fly we're going to put on. These barb crusher pliers are really handy for me. I'll put those on. Flattens that out. So it's not going to mess with the thread. All right, I like to do long open spiral wraps around this wire. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you dig in between the wire. It starts becoming a pain. And once you've done enough of this, you actually have enough that you can come back in and put some actual wraps over. And this wire is not going to come apart. It's not going to go anywhere even if a little toothy predator hits it, which is what we're hoping to have happen. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we'll finish off that thread base. Bring this forward just a bit. <clears throat> and Kind of measuring in my mind where I want to be tying in materials. And I think I'm going to be tying in right, well, that's about here. I'm going to be putting a head on to this fly, so I don't want to crowd. So I'm actually tying material a little bit farther back. And to do this, uh, the first thing we're going to do is put in just a couple pieces of more of like a saltwater chartreuse, somewhat translucent flash. Not too many strands. Three, four. Oh, maybe five or so. flash isn't coming out it's not going anywhere it gets me right to where I want to start tying in my next bit I'm gonna part this around the hook and I'll trim it now I don't want this one quite as long so maybe about even with the feathers themselves that will kind of disguise itself down in the body. We put on the uh, bucktail. That'll hold it in place. <clears throat> so we're going to be doing this uh, with a chartreuse belly um, and a, uh, a black top. So black over chartreuse. I like that color. Seems to work pretty well. 
at least enough to get them to say hello, get your heart racing, and disappear back into the shallows again, or in the depths, depending on where you're fishing. Well, that's musky fishing. Cast out for the musky. Musky comes up and says, Hello. Uh, oh, I'm not going to bite your fly. I just want to torture you. And you say, Oh, well, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully I'll see you next time. If you get lucky, maybe they'll bite it. So... Standard, just prepare your bucktail. Slip it on, wrap it in. Try to do this at a bit of an angle if you can. to work it around hook shank a little bit as well just a bit <clears throat> trying to get a little bit better coverage doing that that looks pretty good I like a little bit of an accent so some red bucktail As you can see, we're using a ton of it. <laughs> Just enough to make it look a little bit wounded. I don't want to... put on a ton of it. Just enough so it's sitting along the belly. It says, hey, look at me. I'm a little hurt. I'm an easy meal. Come get me. Maybe, maybe that musky will be enticed to give her a bite. And that's enough to get that effect. All right, so we're going to flip it over. We're going to tie on our black top. And this will come in a couple different pieces. First is a bucktail. I don't have a lot of my bucktail left, as you can see. I've tied one or two flies with black. I like black. Seems to get the job done. Which is nice. So. Got our bucktail, or our bucktail nub. If you're like me and you don't have much black left. Get our little shorties out. And let's. Measure what we want. That's about the same length as our chartreuse. Yeah. Just long enough. All right, so now we can lay that down right on top. Standard technique. Pulling up, not pulling down, so I'm not spinning it. Put it on at a little bit of an angle with a slightly angled cut. It helps make this really nice in profile. and profile. Kind of more of an even cone. And again, just kind of manipulating it a little bit with my thumb before I put a ton more wraps in place to Kind of lock it in, I'm trying to get a nice profile. I'm not looking for it to be super fat in this direction, more wide. I want something that, as it swims, it looks thin. And if I kick it, make it look fat. All right. So now, put some tighter wraps in. 
taper this front section just a bit. All right. We are going to stop our thread about there. I'm going to put some flash over the top of the back. And I got this really nice black, I think they call it Firefly, flash. I really like it. This looks great in the water, looks great out of the water. I like using it. So I'm going to take a fairly healthy amount. It's a good profile on the top. This helps make it nice and shimmery. All right, I'm not gonna worry about trying to double this over and, and fold it back. Um, that tends to leave a little bit of a bump up front. And I don't want to leave a bump up front. All right, well, I got this held. Cut this back end right there. And let's cut the front and a taper, and then we'll clean it up, huh? I think that sounds like a plan. Kind of just everything the way I want it. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, I don't worry about that little front bit. These aren't gonna pull out. And I'm actually gonna end up covering all this. Um, bit of body tubing. And so we're gonna put some on. About there. Just eyeball it. All right. This is where that thicker thread really comes in handy. Gel spun wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. If you want to go thicker than the 210. It should work really well. All right, so I'm gonna keep this in place. Um, I'm gonna lock this down. Kind of secure all this. So it's not gonna go anywhere on me. Take a bead back along this thread too, just to protect it. We'll go down the sides a bit. This is a thin. UV versus the thick, so it flows around a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and put on our UV light. For those of you at home, make sure you're wearing your UV protective glasses when watching YouTube, so my UV light doesn't, doesn't come through the computer screen or the phone screen and get your eyes. I probably should be wearing some right now myself, but you know. Why not? <clears throat> Give this another couple of seconds. Let it get nice and cured. Keep these thread wraps from moving on me. All right, that should be good. <clears throat> Next part about this, we're going to take work this back just a bit. All I'm doing is expanding out the front of this body tubing. Get it to start to separate. <clears throat> so then I come back in, melt them up just a bit. That keeps it from going too crazy and fraying on me. But if I do that before I start separating it out, then it becomes too tight. It's just, a pro just as much of a problem. There we go. 
I'm gonna get to tie this part in. Right over top of where I just tied in before. All right, now, this nice little gap right in between. It's gonna be a really nice place to tie in. Uh, so this is slopping, it's some black slopping. There's actually two, two pieces together. And uh, I'm gonna use this to make a nice collar around the front of this fly. And then when I push this head back, it'll push all that, that material right behind it. And then it'll look real nice. Give a nice thick throat to this fly. Bigger tie-in point, because I'm going to do some wrapping forward on it. So I want a good amount to secure it in by. So. Yeah, let's wrap it back. And we are going to go ahead and start wrapping this material around. I don't want to trap it on itself, so I'm going to kind of tease it back as I go. Yeah, that's where I want it to be. And standard technique of putting the thread behind and wrapping up over top of it, trap that material in place. Well, I like to do it three times before I cut it and then put on some, some additional security wraps. Make sure I don't cut my thread because that's always fun when you do that. Okay. Uh, that's in place. And I can actually whip finish a musky fly. That's not always the case. Two. Three. I'm going to do a double. Two, three, four for security. Go ahead, snip the thread. We're almost there. I wanna, I do wanna protect these thread wraps so they don't come out on me. So we're just gonna put on a little bit of UV epoxy and it gets on a little bit of slopping too, no big deal. All right, put on your safety glasses again. Just cure it a little bit longer. And this will cure perfect in the sun. I mean, if you're worried about any tackiness or anything, not that it'll matter because this is gonna fold over top of it and protect it anyway. I just wanted to make sure that those threads are locked in place, welded in. Okay. And now we need to do the head of our fly, so we just push this back. See that? That's what I like about this, this collar. Now I got this really nice collar. Adds a little bit of bulk all the way around it. And more importantly, it's gonna push some water. We're gonna help it to push water though. Because this material 
isn't solid. But this is a black over chartreuse fly. I don't have perfectly two-toned body tubing, so I'll use a Sharpie. This can take a minute. All right, as you can see, kind of jump to the end. For the most part, it's nice and black. Gives the idea, anyway. Now, which looks cool. Uh, so I want to do eyes on this. And so I'm going to do some sticker eyes. Little sticker eyes. These are nice looking. Very reflective. Done other types of eyes. One of the ones that kind of stick out a little bit more. They tend to work unless you smack things off rocks like I do. And then you just end up with the underside. It actually looks an awful lot like this. So I figured I'd just cut to the chase and just put on a sticker eye. And let's do the other side. Get something to st stick on. So I have never found an eye whose adhesive is good enough. I hover over it. That'll work. So. Oh, the fun part. See, there's a whole bunch of holes in this fly, at least in the head. So what I want to do is fix that. And make this thing not as... Porous, so that I displace more water. See what? Why you want to displace water? This is going to cause disturbance, and more importantly, cause this thing to kick. That's what we're really after. Fly that kicks. See, musky are opportunistic. And what they want to do. Hit something from the side. That's usually why you got those articulated musky flies. And uh, the articulated musky fly really helps make that fly kick out to the side. Now, articulated musky flies happen to be rather difficult to throw from a smaller, like an 8 weight or a 9 weight. Usually you're slinging a 10 weight for those. Well, that's fine. So it's been about three or four or ten hours. And your arms wanting to fall off. And your wrist hate you. So if I can make my life a little bit simpler, try to get that action with a lighter fly. It might work really well. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm taking this in sections. You know. If I put a whole bunch on, it'll run through and not give me quite the effect I want. All right. So now we're going to let it cure a little bit better. All right. And I like to finish up with some high gloss head cement. This only further helps to seal in 
head of this. Works really well to lock in the eyes too. So they're on these eyes. Makes everything nice and tough. The other thing is, is that you'll get a little bit of tackiness from UV. You always hear people say, oh, I like this formula versus that formula. This formula becomes tacky. That formula is less tacky. But you know what? If it's a little tacky, all that means is it holds head cement that much better. And so I almost always finish off, anytime I've got exposed, UV, I finish it off with some head cement. Also adds a little bit of weight. Remember I was talking about having weight in the front end of this fly? Well, this head cement's pretty heavy. This is going to help this fly dive a little bit head down. Um, not a ton. It's not like going to give us a clouser jigging action. But it will kick the tail up a bit. You know, so that, plus it'll want to kick to the side just a touch. Because this isn't very hydrodynamic. Makes it a little bit more enticing. You know. Makes it so a musky might want it a little bit better. And uh, wipe this off. So I can reuse this bodkin and not just have a head cement hammer. And then rotary vise cure it. <clears throat> You know, that's all there really is to it. You can see not a lot of bulk. Very lightweight fly, but cool profile, right? Thin, fat, need head, help push water, make a disturbance. Uh, this is going to work in uh, for bass uh, as well as musky. Um, I, I switch over, and this is another reason why I like these for eight weights, because usually I'm not targeting a bass with a 10 weight. If the water's really cloudy, you've had a lot of rain or something like that, um, throw a small musky fly and you'll be surprised. The, the bass will go after it because the bass will key in on all the vibrations that this is going to create. The slopping's going to create vibrations up front. This hackle in the back is going to flutter. It'll make a little bit of vibration and just the sheer volume of water this fly is going to push is all going to help create noise and disturbance, have the bass key in on it. All right. Uh, that's all there is to it. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck. Tight lines.